Hello, this is Michael Kraut with Idea Dudes, and we're going to be talking about setting up shared folders. So if you have any questions, there's a question in the comment box on the bottom of the page. Just fill it out. Let's get started. So the module topics we're going to look at is shared folders. This is the only way that we can give access to resources across the network. We're going to look at how to connect to a shared folder, disconnect sessions from a shared folder, and the cons of shared folders. And then we have a lab exercise. So when we talk about shared folders, they provide access to information on other machines. So in the very beginning, when we started with Windows, the only way that we can give any type of permissions or any type of security is we had to share the folders across the network. So Windows for work groups, if you remember that one, before we had the NT, NT days and with NTFS. So what we had was shared permissions. And so what it does is provides access to information on other machines. Only security available across the network is sharing. And you can see right here that there are two things that we need here. We need Microsoft Client for Microsoft Networks and File and Print Sharing for Microsoft Networks. Those are the two things that we have to have to be able to do sharing. So if you don't want to share anything with anybody else, that's being stingy, but if you don't want to for security purpose, for example, if you work for maybe the Pentagon or you work for a high security agency, then what you need to do is you need to uncheck the file and print sharing. But then you gotta understand that has a caveat of other things. You won't be able to share printers, you won't be able to share folders, you won't be able to access certain things through the network. It just makes your machine pretty much dormant, doesn't do anything else. So you need clients for Microsoft Networks, which this is your gateway. The gateway, what it does is it does translation. So it translates the information for us into the language that Microsoft understands. And then file and print sharing is another service which allows us to be able to provide the actual infrastructure or the backbone for sharing files and folders. Or sharing folders, actually. It's not sharing the files, it's sharing the folder, and then the files inside we'll have access to. So sharing a folder, what we do is we can go into our computer management and we can also go into Active Directory. Well, this is a computer management, and you can see that we're in the shares. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new share, and that creates a uh, Welcome to the Share Folder Wizard. And we're going to go into the folder, which is Win2003. And the folder path is going to be E colon backslash users. And that's going to be the folder that we're going to use for. And guess what? We can use this for like profiles. And that's really what we're doing. We're just sharing this out so that we can have our roaming profiles be located within this uh, share. So the username is shares and the share path is double backslash win 2003 and users, backslash users. Then we can put a description in here and the description is used for if we're trying to find the share we got thousands and thousands of shares that are out there. And we can also allow for offline setting. And offline, meaning offline sharing, means that, say you have a laptop. You come into work. You connect to your network. And you start working on files. Well, those files are in a offline share. Then what happens is, is when you disconnect, it's going to take a copy with you. So you can go home. You can make changes to the share or to the files, come back in next day, connect to the network. It's going to update that information that's in the share. So it's called offline files and folders. So we can change the offline setting by clicking on change. And you can see that when we get into offline settings, you can choose whether and how the contents of the share will be available to users who are offline. Only the files and programs that users specify will be available offline, or you can see, say all files and programs that users open from the share will be automatically available offline. And we can optimize it for performance. Now, for files or programs from the share will not be available offline. So there's the 
different bubbles or the different ways that we can configure the offline or offline files and folders. Now, next step when we go and click on next, we'll make a determination on which type of permissions that we want to specify for the share. So all users have read-only access, administrators have full access, other users have read-only access, administrators have full access, other users have read and uh, write access, and then you can also make it so it's customized. And what this is going to do is this is going to set up our default permissions. And we can customize it and put the groups that we want to have on our ACL, which is the access, access control list. And the access control list is saying, hey, this is the individuals that I want to have access to our resources. It's like our guest list. If you're in a par on the guest list, you get in a party. If you're not on the guest list, then you don't have access. You don't have access to any of the resources. Don't have access to the party, have the fun, and so forth. So once we're done, we click on finish. Sharing was successful. You selected the following share settings. Uh, folder is e-users. Share name is users. And the share path is double backslash win2003 slash users. And when uh, you can have a check mark, mark, there's a check box here that you can put a check mark in. And when I click the close, I can make this so it runs again. So I can create other shares that I have. So I don't have to just stop there. I can keep on creating shares. And you can see there's the share users, which is a C users and it's windows. And you can see that we don't have any client connections at this point. And the description is user folders. Now, going into the properties, the customize the permissions, you can see the share permissions. This is all we have. And this is why shares are not security strongholds, because all we have is full control, change, and read. That's it. We don't have any granular type permissions. You either have full control, change will allow you to modify, well, delete, uh, write to it, add to it, and read only allows you to just take a look at it. So you can see everyone has read. So what is everyone? Remember, everyone is a special identity group and includes everyone in the Windows 2003 domain or within the forest. So everyone, anybody who uh, connects is going to have access, read access. So that means that guy from the internet is coming through IS, the I IS, user underscore computer name, they're going to have read access. If we have full control, then they'd have full control of that share. But we'll find out that later on, we can combine the share permissions with the security. And we'll talk about more how we can control what access the individuals have to the actual Windows 2003 resources. So managing a shared folder one of the things that we can do is we can go in, we can make a description. We can also limit the maximum allowed that are going to be allowed to connect to the share. And we can say, okay, allow the number of users. And then we put in how many users that there are. And we can also modify the offline settings so we can make it so that is this folder going to be available offline? and what type of offline access are we going to grant them. Then we have our publish, fold, uh, publish tab, and what publish tab does is this makes it so that we can allow this or publish it in Active Directory. So what that means is, is when people want to search for a share, they can use Active Directory Find, and we can locate the share based on a description, we can also uh, base it on the owner, which is going to be a UPN, user principal name, which is just like the email address, and keywords. We can put keywords in. Like if this is for users, then we put users. Uh, profiles, profiles. And that way, when we go and search for it, and we go into our advanced properties and look at the actual keywords, we can put those keywords in and find it that way. And you can see that we're editing the keywords. We put the keyword in here, click on the add, and that will put it down here so that we can uh, specify which keywords we want to 
associate with uh, the shared folder. And there's the shared permissions again, and you can see everyone has read. And then we have the security tab. And the security tab, this is where we can get granular. And we'll be talking about this in the next module. But with the security, this is NTFS security. So we got full control, modify, read, execute, list folder contents, read and write. And so the combination of the share and the NTFS permissions is going to be the most restrictive. So I have share permissions for everyone. So everyone is only going to be able to read. So the share permission for everyone is read here and security. Well, we don't actually have it here, so it's not even going to give it access. So what we need to do is we have to add in here the everyone group, and then we can give them whatever permissions we want over here, but still, whatever is most restrictive across the network, that's the one that's going to take precedence. So configuring share permissions. We have read. Users can display folder names, file names, file data, attributes, also run program files, and other folders within the shared folder. So if we have any programs in that, as long as we can read it, we can run it. Then we have change, which create folders. We can add files to folders, change data into files, append data to the files, change file attributes, delete folders and files, and perform actions permitted by read permissions. Then full control, that gives you everything. That's like saying, okay, you are the lord of this folder. You can change file permissions, take ownership, perform all tasks that are allowed by the change permissions. So let's take a look at the shared folder cons. Why don't we want to use shared folders? Well, the scope, only available during network access. So what does that mean? Well, if I'm sitting in front of the machine, it's called interactive access. That means that it's local. The share is not available. It's only available when I go in and I connect through a UNC, which is double backslash the server name backslash the share name. Replication doesn't support replication. So that means I can't back up or have this in a different area for our shares. Resiliency is not included in the backup and restore of data. Once you back up that share, you lose the share. So the share is still available, but there's no backup and restore of the data. It's fragile. Share permissions are lost if moved and renamed. So if I take a share and rename it, boom, all the permissions are gone. If I move it to a different area, all their permissions are gone. Lack of detail control, share permissions are not granular. So all we have is full control, change, and read. Where NTFS is going to give us a more granular, a more stringent type of security. Auditing, you can't audit sharing, shares. Auditing cannot be uh, tracked just on sharing. Complexity of share and NTFS permissions are combined. Most restrictive takes place. This is another layer to troubleshoot. So, so those are the cons of using sharing. The only benefit of using sharing, it gives us access across the network. That's it. So you have a practice setting up shared folders. Exercise one is share a folder. Exercise two is connect to a shared folder. Exercise three, disconnect sessions from a server. This time of this lab is 45 minutes. If you have questions, use the question comment box. Thanks for joining us.